Thank you. And uh, it really is uh, very nice to be here this afternoon and be able to uh, share with you some of the things we have going on in the energy efficiency portfolio uh, in EERE. So let's see. So one of the reasons it's exciting to be here is because of the month that we indeed are in. This is October. It's uh, Energy Awareness Month. Uh, but not only that, there's a number of other things going on in the energy efficiency world uh, to, uh, this month, including that it's uh, Happy Weatherization Month. Uh, so this is the month that we also celebrate uh, some of the great accomplishments that go on with our low-income weatherization program. And we also have Happy uh, Manufacturing Day this month on uh, October 6th, as well as Energy Efficiency Day uh, this coming Thursday. So uh, a lot going on uh, to share. So what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, around energy efficiency is a little bit about the opportunity that we uh, have had and continue to have. Uh, in this country, uh, what we're doing with energy efficiency and manufacturing, uh, the ERE role, of course, some of our recent accomplishments, uh, and a little bit of what's next. So I do think it's always important to start when we talk about uh, energy efficiency, is to talk about what it is. Um, so what is it? Uh, fundamentally, it is using less energy to achieve the same or better services. Uh, or outputs. It's, it's not conservation, uh, which is really cutting back on use, but certainly these things can go hand in hand. But what we really want to drive forward on is the efficiency part and using less energy to achieve the same or better services. And when we do do that, um, we get a lot of important uh, benefits uh, for the country, for states, for communities, uh, and for people uh, in their houses. Uh, we get lower energy bills, we get lower pollution, we get more jobs, we get increased business competitiveness, and overall we get greater economic growth. Uh, one of these things that is just win, 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 win um, all the way around. The other point I want to make is that um, when we think about energy efficiency, the savings, the jobs, energy efficiency is really more than all of that uh, to this country. Uh, when you can actually put it together and deliver it uh, as a stream of savings across uh, a sector, across a community, it actually becomes an energy resource that then can compete uh, with the under other energy resources that we have uh, in this country. And indeed, when you look historically uh, at our energy mix in this country, we now see that about 18% of our energy, uh, well, at least our electricity generation uh, in this country is, uh, is uh, attributed to energy efficiency. So it's sort of the energy we didn't use is an important energy resource. Uh, and it's part of what is helping us keep energy costs affordable uh, and also having a big contribution to energy reliability. An important part of the energy efficiency resource as well is that as you look at that nice green map down there on the right hand corner is energy efficiency is prevalent and energy efficiency is everywhere uh, across our country. And I was talking a little bit about the costs of energy efficiency. When you um, do see the types of programs that are being run across the country to deliver efficiency to homes and to businesses, you can see that those programs can get delivered at a cost, about two to four cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, and that is coming in at about half the cost of bringing new types of uh, electricity supplies online. So again, a very, uh, important part of keeping our energy costs affordable. And the Department of Energy has also done a number of studies around the linkage between energy efficiency and jobs, both the investment in energy efficiency and how many jobs that generates, as well as the savings and what that generates. Uh, and we're on the order of uh, you know, millions of jobs in this country uh, being attributed to the energy efficiency industries. Um, so uh, a great story for efficiency. But let's talk a little bit about the progress um, that we've made. And I think sometimes we just don't realize it because it's happening uh, sort of behind the doors uh, uh, of the things that are in our home. So take the average refrigerator as an example and uh, look back a couple decades versus what we have today. Um, so if you look at 
you know, refrigerators, they were typically, you know, several decades ago, cost you $1,200, get a refrigerator, cost you $200 a year to pay the bill, and it was about 18 uh, cubic feet of space. Today, it's $550 on average to buy that new refrigerator, cost $50 a year to operate, and it's 22 cubic feet. Not only that, it's frost free. It has temperature controlled drawers and uh, keep food and it keeps food fresher. It's got um, you know ice through the door. Um, so really, what is the story? You know these units are half the price. They're bigger and 75 percent less costly to operate. So that's really tremendous uh, innovation in a very common household product. Take the light bulb. Um, you know we're now using uh, a bulb that's um, what. 100 years old? I mean, it was an amazing innovation when Thomas Edison brought this forth. Uh, but it's 100-year-old technology. We are now looking at a new generation of technologies that, again, 75% less energy, uh, substantially less to operate, and now are lasting up to 25,000 hours once you put them in place. Uh, and when you total all this together, what do we have? We've got people in their homes saving hundreds of dollars a year, uh, each and every year, uh, because of the innovation that's taking place. Uh, I think you know I have to compete with my colleague here, uh, Mr. Berube, and show uh, another innovation uh, set of curves here that just demonstrate that as the Department of Energy continues to do its work with performers across the country to bring down the costs of some of these key technologies, uh, you do see that the market starts to take off. So that just shows you the declining costs for the LED eight. A type bulb and how uh, the red line, uh, you know, is is in hot pursuit of installing the bulbs once these prices have come down. And we now see that we've got over we've got about 200 million or so bulbs installed uh, as of the end of 2015. And you can see that that's a curve that um, looks like it's going to continue to grow uh, for quite a while. So a very exciting time for lighting. Uh, in this country. And again, a transformation the Department of Energy has had a big part of and one that we're all living through. I mean, it's really a radical change in lighting, but um, it's just sort of happening seamlessly uh, behind the scenes as we go about our everyday lives. So very exciting. So what really is uh, EERE's role? Well, it's next generation technologies, being thoughtful about the key sectors, homes, buildings, manufacturing. We also run uh, a very important program around uh, minimum standards uh, for products sold in this country. If they don't meet uh, minimum efficiency requirements, they can't be sold. Uh, we run a program to help uh, improve the efficiency of uh, low-income households. We work with state leaders uh, across the country around a variety of programs that they can run uh, to advance energy efficiency and actually clean energy more broadly. Uh, federal leadership within the EE portfolio. Uh, we have the Federal Energy Management Program, which is the program helping the other agencies across the country, uh, across the federal government, lead by example uh, to both reduce taxpayer costs but actually be leaders uh, for others. Uh, across the country, and we do a lot to leverage public and private sector uh, leadership. So, we, you know, we do this across um, the residential, commercial, and industrial sectors. That's about three quarters of the energy we use in this country, uh, and more than that of the electricity that we use in this country. And again, we're very thoughtful about how energy use breaks up by market and market segment. Uh, and I think one of the great uh, efforts that was done to uh, break out these market segments was a McKinsey report uh, that was done in 2008 that shows you it's not just industry, commercial, and residential, but it's like, what's going on in new buildings? What's going on in existing buildings? How do you do deep retrofits in existing buildings? Uh, and again, how do you break out energy uh, more specifically in our homes and buildings and industry so that we can effectively uh, target our programs? So, homes and buildings. Um, lots of nice colors and numbers up here, but I think the bottom line is there, 
whereas we've made tremendous progress with things like refrigerators and lighting and, and others, there's tremendous remaining potential for our homes and buildings. And when you break down how we use energy, both residentially and commercially, we see opportunity space to drive down the energy use by about another 50% uh, across the key areas of heating, cooling, lighting, water heating, refrigeration, drying, and others. And of course, there's also that those miscellaneous energy loads of all the uh, things we're going to need to do as we um, continue to collect all that big data. You know, that stuff uses energy. So, uh, so. Um, anyway, so just a lot of opportunity. Uh, and what we see is uh, you know, opportunity on the order of 10 quads or more, which adds up to about $100 billion a year uh, in energy bills that can be cost effectively saved um, by 2030. So again, what are some interesting successes? And some, you know, I, I have to, you know, I, you know, they are all fascinating in and of, um, you know, in and in, the, in their own right, you know, but some of them are, are fairly small sort of things that can have big impacts. One uh, innovation, for example, is just the motor uh, that is being used in refrigerated cases in grocery stores across the country. Uh, a new type uh, motor that can be put in and replaced, and again, that is going to have huge benefits uh, for grocery stores of, of you know, small to medium size in terms of making their businesses um, you know, have lower cost and be more competitive and, and be able to stay uh, in a you know, whole variety of neighborhoods for the long term. Rooftop units, um, rooftop chillers that we see those big white boxes on our big box retailer uh, buildings all across the country using huge amounts of air conditioning energy. Uh, and again, being able to uh, advance technologies that are reducing the uh, energy use of those types of um, pieces of equipment by 50% or so. Uh, and then, you know, there's other things going on like next generation heating and cooling uh, that take you to non um, compression uh, type systems like the electrochemical water heater. So, great um, things uh, that are underway. So manufacturing, let's talk a little bit uh, about that um, here. You know, our manufacturing industry in this country uses about 25% of our overall energy use, but it's, of course, much, much more than that in terms of its importance to our country. Um, you know, big part of our GDP, big employer, uh, big part of um, the world's manufacturing output, our exports, something that we want to be as thoughtful as possible in terms of um, keeping competitive, but not just keeping them competitive uh, from an energy uh, standpoint, but being thoughtful about next generation materials, next generation processes, which mean we're at the forefront of wherever uh, the economy is going to go. So we've got a, a full portfolio around advanced materials, uh, including things like next generation semiconductors, lightweight materials, uh, so that, they, that we can reduce the energy footprint of other types of things, uh, including the vehicle, as an example. Work very closely with our vehicle technology program. Um, so a lot going on in that space. So what are some recent accomplishments here? Well, again, high performance computing. Uh, I think that's uh, an important area across EERE uh, these days. And we've got a recent example where we leverage the high performance capabilities um, of the labs to optimize a steel blast furnace in Gary, Indiana for 10% gains. Huge um, you know, benefits from that for US industry. We've also been able to demonstrate um, through work with Oak Ridge National Labs through a manufacturing demonstration facility, uh, the use of new additive manufacturing technologies around rapid prototyping uh, and innovation uh, so that we've been able to, one, uh, basically 3D print a whole vehicle, the Shelby Cobra, which is bringing excitement uh, to what's going on uh, with uh, 3D manufacturing and a new generation materials. Uh, and sort of on the other side of the Shelby Cobra is actually the 3D printing of major parts of an excavator, just so we can get the uh, whole construction industry uh, engaged in this as well. So again, um, some very exciting uh, disruptive type uh, activities going on there. 
So going um, on to some of the other things we're doing in EE space, because it's really such an important part of the whole portfolio. Again, I mentioned DOE appliance standards. Um, this has been a many, many year program at the department, um, you know, all based on congressional authorities and all. So where are we now with uh, appliance standards? Uh, you know, DOE's program now covers 65 different product categories that represent big amounts of energy in each of the key sectors, residentially, commercially, and industrially. And when you add up the savings from the Appliance Standards Program, we're now uh, seeing that we're saving the country something on the order of $60 billion or more each year, uh, which will only grow as um, some of the standards that are still sort of rolling out um, you know, start to uh, be the, you know, the, the, the leverage point uh, in the marketplace. So um, again, huge savings for businesses uh, and people in their homes. You know, again, this is weatherization month. Uh, so let me just give you the update on this program as well, our low income weatherization effort. Another program that's been um, at the Department of Energy for over 40 years. At this point in time, it's now served to weather 7 million homes across the country uh, and is saving people uh, on the order of close to $300 or more um, for the life of the measures, you know, so if that's 10 or 15 years, you know, you're now at the um, you know, $3,000 plus um, savings for these households, uh, as well as this program's created a, a number of jobs and really helps set the standards uh, for quality um, training and, uh, and, and work uh, around home retrofits. What we're doing in the um, state space, you know, we have a program that engages with the state energy offices uh, in all of the states as well as uh, our territories around things like strategic energy management, emergency planning. Again, another uh, very long uh, time program at the Department of Energy uh, that helps them move forward with the things they need to to meet their own objectives, as well as gives them a little bit of an opportunity to do stuff that's really important uh, to their state. A great example down here uh, in Colorado, where Colorado was able to uh, engage with their dairy industry, pilot uh, some programmatic approaches, uh, delivering uh, pretty nice savings uh, to that industry and then expand it worldwide. It's also uh, a program through which we've been able to work to expand the use of, per of energy savings performance contracting, a way to bring third-party financing in to help with uh, financing public infrastructure improvements, um, something that's been a big part of our federal program uh, as well. You know, FEMP, our Federal Energy Management Program, uh, as I said, works with all the federal agencies to help them achieve uh, a set of fairly substantial goals that have been set by Congress and others. You know, when you step back, this really is pretty important in that the federal government is the largest U.S. energy user. Uh, when you put it all together, using uh, by itself about 1.3 quads of energy uh, at a cost of $16 billion a year. So being able to improve buildings, facilities, um, some efforts um, in the fleet world uh, is, uh, is a great way to reduce taxpayer costs, but also to model things in a way that others um, can follow. And FEMP has been working with the agencies uh, to do a great amount of work there. Uh, just a quick example here uh, that is um, pretty close uh, to where we're located, just out at uh, the White Oak Campus uh, in Maryland, a project that uh, FEMP worked with uh, GSA on to help in a consolidation effort, but in that consolidation effort was able to leverage third-party financing uh, as well as build out a facility uh, that saves energy, water, and has enhanced resiliency, and it's already been able to demonstrate um, off-grid um, or you know, being unhooked uh, sort of capabilities. So a great, um, as we know, uh, set of capabilities that uh, many of our federal facilities um, want to have and will be moving uh, toward having. So finally, I just want to talk about uh, us and what we do to leverage um, leaders across the country uh, because I think this is so important uh, so that we can continue to uh, engage with a whole 
a variety of organizations that are seeking uh, to be as um, competitive and as they can reduce their energy costs, uh, be in the forefront of, of being efficient. Uh, and because what they do is give us um, tremendous feedback in terms of what's working, what their remaining challenges are, and, uh, and really help keep all of our work at the top uh, of the game, so to speak. Uh, so just giving a, a shout out to our Better Buildings effort, uh, which as you can see is working with players that have a fair amount of building square footage and industrial square footage all across the country, as well as across a diverse set of uh, market sectors in the commercial um, and industrial space, you know, multifamily, education, data centers, uh, and others. So uh, just, um, you know, closing out with, uh, with that need to have a, a great linkage into the marketplace. So uh, with that, um, I uh, thank you for your, uh, your uh, being here and uh, listening to this overview of energy efficiency. And again, happy to uh, answer any questions later uh, if you have some. Um, and you know, so I, I think you know pretty much where to, where to find us. So thank you.